the University of Southampton has uh, an ambition to change the world for the better through education, research, through enterprise and through collaborations across the world. In medicine, we do this by basic discovery in key disciplines, one of which is cancer sciences. Cancer treatment is changing all the time and it's changing faster and faster. Over the years, we've used radiation treatment, we've used surgery, we've used chemotherapy. The era that we're now in is where we're at the beginning of treatment using the immune system, so-called immunotherapy, to treat cancer. And the reason that we're very excited about it just at the moment is that we're starting to see real results in the clinic from treatments that throw the switches in the patient's immune system. Immunotherapy can work in many ways, but in principle what we're saying is, what we understand now is that most cancers, and it's a very difficult question to say exactly how many, but we believe the majority of cancers, the immune system recognises them as disease. And it tries to infiltrate them with killer T cells. These are part of the immune system. We tend to call them tumour infiltrating lymphocytes. And those killer cells move into the cancer and they often get switched off. So their normal function, which is to kill, gets switched off and so the cancer can carry on growing. The exciting thing about the immune system is that it gives you lifelong protection. If we vaccinate a child against measles, they don't get measles for the whole of their life. If we can really get the immune system to recognise cancer, we can get long-lasting effects against the cancer and we can realistically start to talk about cures. I did in fact have non-small cell lung cancer. Um, so I was then offered a, a courses of radiotherapy and chemotherapy, which I underwent, uh, and they were uh, on the face of it successful. And during the course of that, um, my oncologist asked me whether I'd like to take part in a trial. I think people have been a bit nervous in the past to support clinical research because they don't actually see results quick. And this is what I think people sometimes do because they may be desperate, they might have a loved one that's so ill and they feel that they're not going to benefit from anything they might put in now. But I could easily say that and I know it wasn't good for my husband and I know it's mostly not fantastic for my sister but in a way it is because she's actually living a quality of life. It's nearly six years after I was diagnosed with lung cancer. We don't know yet precisely what the reason for that is. My quality of life now is fantastic. So from that point of view, you know, it's, it's been a really, really good thing to do. To use immunology to treat cancer is going to require a lot of talent and it isn't something that you can do if you're just one lone genius in a laboratory. You need a big team of people around you. And science as a whole requires larger and larger teams of people to make progress. It's a complicated technological business these days. What the Centre for Cancer Immunology will do is concentrate that talent on this problem. How do we get the immune system to see cancer? How do we turn it on? How do we turn it off before it causes damage? And by bringing this team together in the centre, we know that we'll be able to make progress faster than ever before. What's my opinion of clinical research? Well, um, I suppose until I was diagnosed with cancer, you're aware of it, but you just don't take too much notice of it. Um, now, for me, it's incredibly important because I can see that it is, it is the only way we'll actually eventually find the cures that we're looking for.